Okay, I want to do this video um, on prosperity preachers. I had the opportunity to watch a few interviews of Bishop Whitehead, you know, uh, the bishop in Brooklyn that was robbed on live stream. And now after listening to him, I have a better understanding of him. Now, this may be very well an insurance scam. But when it comes to him being a prosperity preacher, I now understand him because his mentor is Bishop Jordan. Most of you have no idea who Bishop Jordan is. I remember Bishop Jordan from the 90s. His mentor, Bishop Jordan's mentor was Reverend Ike. I found that to be quite interesting. Now, all of these guys preach a prosperity message to the people. And to be quite honest, there's really nothing wrong with that. It's not really illegal to preach prosperity messages. I remember back in the 80s, even as far back as the 70s, with Reverend Ike, and even with this one preacher that called himself Father Divine, and he believed, and he put out that he was God. Now, that to many should be a familiar message because there are so many in the so-called Black conscious community that call themselves God. Look at Brother Polite and look at where he is now. Now, what I find quite interesting is, is many of these dudes in the so-called black conscious community always bash the church. People always talk about the preachers and churches scamming people. But just about every organization follows the same pattern that many of these prosperity preachers preach. One thing we have to really acknowledge is that the Bible is an extremely powerful book. Not that the Bible is able or preachers are able to use the Bible to control the minds of the people, but the Bible is also used for positive speaking or these people that, that have, as you call, a get rich scheme. If you look at a lot of these motivational speakers, their foundation is the Bible. They always use the Bible, the scriptures, for their motivation and people have no problem paying money out to these people so they're actually using the principles of the bible to get rich is there anything wrong with that no because in the bible it's written that I wish above all that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. But at the same time, the scripture says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, people like Reverend Ike look at money as God. He referred to money as being his God. That's where he strongly errors. But there are people or prosperity preachers that are prosperous, but at the same time, money is not their God. I've met people growing up as far back as the 60s and 70s that was into voodoo or witchcraft or the dark arts. And these people were quite wealthy but they were living in poor conditions. You would never think 
that they were wealthy. Because of how they lived and how they dressed, they weren't looking at money as their God, but yet they were able to provide a service to their customers. And people had no problem paying the money to get work done. The most of these say psychic. And a lot of us back in the 90s remember the famous psychic woman that was on TV. Call me now. That woman was quite well off because she had her television series and people called in. And that call, you were paying like so much per minute to talk to this woman, Miss Cleo, right? Remember Cleo? She was doing the same thing that many prosperity preachers in the church do. And no one really criticized her. Very few people spoke out against Miss Cleo, but at the same time, they called in because of out of curiosity, they wanted to know the unseen. And they didn't mind paying that money. They didn't mind running up their phone bill to get information from Miss Cleo. Now, Father Divine, then there was Reverend Ike, and then Bishop Jordan, which is the mentor of Bishop Whitehead. Now, I remember one of my famous, or better yet, my favorite uh, prosperity preachers was Robert Tilton, a white dude. And a lot of these white dudes got their prosperity message from black men. They saw how well things were with Reverend Ike and they decided to jump on the bandwagon. As a matter of fact, Larry King did an interview with Reverend Ike like he did Reverend uh, Minister Farrakhan, right? Even the Nation of Islam. Look at how Farrakhan live and look at how the FOI live. Farrakhan is well off, as was Elijah Muhammad that came along. They're doing the same thing that the church has done. Now, do all preachers preach a prosperity message? No. When we see churches that are hardly full, that's poor, these are the preachers that's preaching salvation, come out of sin, because most people don't want that message. They don't want to give up the sin. But yet you'll have someone like Reverend Ike come along, or Robert Tilton, or Peter Popoff, and the thing I didn't like about Peter Popoff, another white preacher, was that he always used black people as his gimmicks. And you had false preachers out there or prosperity preachers that would actually pay people to perform. And Peter Popoff was one of those type of preachers. Oh, he paid them like maybe a couple of hundred dollars for them to perform. And then they would have these Jamaican females get on TV and they just be shaking. The minute he touch them, they shake and fall out, right? That's his gimmick. So then you got people that's watching on television that's sitting back watching was like, wow, this man really has got power. He's got power. So they start forking out the dollars because now they want a miracle. Back in the 70s, I remember my mom used to always get Reverend Ike's little pamphlets, his prayer cloth, the blessed oil. And then you have a lot of these televangelists that would sell pieces of wood and say it was a part of Noah's Ark. People want something to believe in. And people are willing to pay money for something to believe in. So you can't really bash them people because. That's their way of trying to cope with today's reality. I repeat that again. That's their way of trying to cope with today's reality. See, so you got people like Father Divine, 
Reverend Ike, uh, Bishop Jordan, Bishop Whitehead, Robert Tilton, Elijah Muhammad, Farrakhan, Polite, the nation of Yahweh, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, and Yahweh and Jim Jones. Let's not forget Jim Jones. So you have people from just about every, even religious beliefs that they made up. They'll come on the scene and they'll come with a miracle or they come with a message. I'm Father Divine. I'm God. I'm this. And they come with a message that would reach certain individuals. And those people are willing to give their life earning for a miracle. So prosperity preachers have their place in this world. Do I agree with all of them? No, but they have their place. It's the same way with a bar or a club where people can go to a bar or a club and drink. The man may be at home and his wife is nagging him and he need a way out. So he goes to the bar and he sit there and he just drink himself. And then when he goes home, he either go to sleep or now he's got to deal with his nagging wife. The same thing with women. We are living in a society now where so many women are now alcoholics and drug heads and crackheads because that's their way of trying to cope with reality. But can we fault these people? We can offer them a better way out, but can we really fault them? I remember watching an interview with Robert Tilton. And he's always been, I like Robert Tilton because to me, he was comical. He reminded me of Guy Smiley on Sesame Street, the Muppet, right? Just pull up Robert Tilton and then pull up Guy Smiley from Sesame Street and you see what I'm talking about. But he reminded me of Guy Smiley. And I used to watch Robert Tilton faithfully, not because I believed in his message, but because of the fact that he reminded me, he was animated. To me, he was funny. And he'll be sitting there talking to you and all of a sudden he says, oh, God is speaking to me and he's, he's dramatic and he's performing. And at the same time, people are dishing out white people. People of all races are dishing out their money to him. You know, and he started naming things just general, you know, uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you got pancreatic cancer. You you have this going on with you. And God is telling me that, that somebody out there, somebody out there, somebody out there is going through a divorce. Somebody out there was, was, was raped or somebody out there is going through depression. But God told me that everything is going to be all right. You're going to receive your deliverance today. So now send me a $1,000 for a prayer cloth and take this prayer cloth and put it under your pillow. And before you go to sleep every night, do walk around your bed about four times and then spit and then go to sleep and God will deliver you. So you got people that follow that doctrine and it works. The Bible works. And if you talk, and I remember Robert Tilton, he was being interviewed. They caught him on the airplane, a reporter did. And she was talking about, she was trying to say he was a scam and uh, he was hypocritical and taking people's money. And Robert Tilton said to this woman, he says, I preach prosperity and I live prosperity. How can you be hypocritical when you preach prosperity? and live prosperity. You have to be the example that you preach. So if I come to you with a prosperity message and I'm living in the dump, what's the first thing you're going to say? How can you tell me how to live and you haven't helped yourself? That's what you can say to me. But if I'm prosperous, and I come and give you the tools. I remember dudes used to come in my store. And everybody's got an idea. And they would come in and tell me, 
brothers, what you can do is you can do this. And if you do this and do this. And the first question I asked them was, did it work for you? And these dudes are struggling, but they have ideas that they don't use themselves. They're always ready to give ideas. And I understand that there's people out there that are messengers. Ideas come to them. These ideas will work. But they just don't apply it to themselves. They're poor. They're struggling. But they always want to give you an idea while you're doing better than them. Right? So that prosperity message has always been around. It's got its place in this world. I don't judge them. I don't criticize them because when you listen to somebody like Reverend Ike and they go to the scriptures, they are right on point with the scriptures. They are just applying it. Even these motivational speakers that don't come under a church, that don't come under religion, when they start using the Psalms, right? Because it's very powerful. And those that work in the dark arts know the power of the Psalms. They know the power of the Psalms. As a matter of fact, you can go into a lot of these, these root shops, these voodoo shops, and they sell the Psalms. And you can sell them online. You can make it a for, you can make a fortune selling just the Psalms. Because those are very powerful books and they're cross religions. Different religions use the Psalms because there's power in that. So when they quote to you a scripture, they're right on point with that. And if people were to follow that prosperity doctrine, it will work. And the first thing that they talk about is your faith, believing. And they talk about how God is in you, right? And how you can make things manifest in your life. But instead of taking those, taking those instructions, you want to bash and criticize people like that. And so now you have these filthy scoffers that come along and see how gullible you are. And they take advantage of you using the Bible. While the Bible is working for you, you're now living under a curse because you're bashing them. Your eyes is fixed on what they have. Jealousy and envy. It's just like when it comes to the tithe. When the Bible says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. And how it says you're cursed with a curse. Well, right there is giving you instructions on how to become prosperous in life. Like the most high says, I wish above all you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. My, one, my favorite scripture in the Bible is where David says, I once was a young man and now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Right. So God don't believe in poverty. He don't believe in you being poor. But you do because you would take his word and twist it to justify being poor or to have lack. So I don't frown on the prosperity preachers. I kind of laugh. I think it's funny. And if you listen to their message, you can learn something. And if you apply that message, you can learn something. So now I better understand Bishop Whitehead. I don't know what else he got going on on the side. But I understand him now because his mentor is Bishop Jordan. Which Bishop Jordan, his mentor was Reverend Ike. See? So it goes back. And then from Reverend Ike, and people like Father Divine, now you have cross-culture. If you look at even a lot of the Africans that's in the continent, they are now, better yet, I'm not going to say scamming. They're now taking advantage of the ignorance of the church because now they're doing the same thing. They're impersonating the black American church and look at them. Just watch their ministry. Their whole preaching there, they're like, and uh, huh. they doing that. That is not African culture. 
but they're doing it and they're doing the same thing that American preachers in the black church are doing and they're making money. But no one is going after these churches. We read articles all the time where these African preachers have women do crazy sexual things on the camera and would tell them that that his his seed will bless them, right? And you got women that would strip in front of these, these, these false prophets, these false preachers, would do hideous things just because they believe that he's the man of God. See, that's when it starts branching off. It's the prosperity preacher, and then you have those that start veering away from the truth or the doctrine of Christ, and they start fulfilling their own the lust of their own flesh, right? So prosperity preachers got his place. I don't bash them. I understand Bishop Whitehead now, right? And I'm not hating on the brother. I don't hate on anyone that's doing good. Just like Brother Polite, young Pharaoh, right? And notice all of these brothers, they came with a message that you wanted to hear. They were able to heed to your itching ear. And one thing I do know, I was born gifted. I was born with, with, with quite a few gifts that I don't even use. And I knew from a very young age, even back in that time in the 90s, because I thought about going to Bishop Jordan's, a couple, couple of his seminars that he had, right? But I didn't go because there was just something that to me wasn't right about that. But you know, I almost went, right? Because of their message. Reverend Ike, same thing. I almost went to some of his seminaries, right? But um, but there's just something that that just wasn't me. But I knew a long time ago, even when I first got in the church, I knew that it would be so easy for me to become a prosperity preacher. I know how to get money like that, but that's just not me, right? Because I don't love money like that. Do I appreciate it? Of course. It's like when people click on that cash app or that Venmo and they donate, that's cool. I take it and put it back into what I'm doing because technically I don't need the money, right? But if people choose to, to donate and contribute, then that's a blessing to them, being a blessing to me, right? So again, like I said, I don't bash these guys, but if you notice, a lot of these guys like the nation of Yahweh, Yahweh bin Yahweh, and other groups like that, the Hebrew Israelites, same thing with them. They're doing the same thing while bashing the church. How do you think they're funding their organization? Think about it. How do you think the Hebrew Israelites are funding their organization, but they attack the church? They will attack the preacher because of what he drives. You just don't see what they have because they put on these robes. See? So I don't fault them. They have their place in society. That's my thought on it. And now I better understand Bishop Whitehead because Bishop Jordan is his mentor and Reverend Ike is his mentor. That's their prosperity message. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.